In this tutorial, we're going to check out a bunch of the new features in WordPress 5.3. A lot of Gutenberg enhancements are in there, some usability enhancements. You'll see all about them in this tutorial. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. And my name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If you like that kind of thing, make sure to click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss future videos. And we're getting started on this tutorial right now. WordPress 5.3 dropped a few days ago. There's a few enhancements you might find useful or maybe not, but I'm going to show you what they are anyway. So 5.3 touts 150 new features and usability improvements. So quite a few. So a lot of these are minor enhancements to things you may not even notice because there's so many of them. For example, uploading non-optimized high resolution pictures taken from your smartphone or other high quality cameras, that upload process has been improved. Now there's a larger default image upload size. That's an example of something you may not notice because you may not upload images that large or you have an image compression plugin that compresses the images as you upload them and so you wouldn't even know about this. One of the biggest additions is a new block inside the Gutenberg editor. If you use Gutenberg, you might find this pretty cool. If you don't, you won't care. But inside the Gutenberg editor, you now have a group block which allows you to create essentially what is a row or a section inside of a page builder. I'll show you how that works really quick. Let's go to pages and add new. It's going to click the plus icon. We have our group block up here. If you can't see it there, search for group, insert it, and we can choose a background color, whatever kind of color you like. Let's make it this color here. And now we can add in the regular content that we normally add in. We can add in individual elements, we can add in columns, and we can basically have a full row in the back. That's all it is. So that's an addition inside WordPress 5.3. We also have the columns block has been updated to support fixed column widths. And you can change a column width by clicking into any column, use this slider to make it larger or smaller, and that is now a fixed column width. We also now have predefined layouts which allows us to arrange content more easily inside the Gutenberg editor. And we used one of these just a few moments ago when we added our columns. Basically, it's just adding columns and they have the predefined sizes you have here. And you can add any one of those column options and adjust them by clicking on them and changing the percentage width to make them larger or smaller. So that's the predefined layouts that are available inside the columns. The heading blocks now offer color controls for text. Believe it or not, that was not a possibility until this update. It seems like controlling your heading color is kind of a big deal, but it just wasn't an option. So there's a lot of plugins, third-party plugins that you can use to create headings more easily and more flexibly, frankly, than the Gutenberg editor. But at least now the default Gutenberg is catching up a little bit. So we now have under our block settings for the heading, color settings, and we can choose a color for our heading text. There's also additional style options, which allow you to set your preferred style for any block that supports this feature. That basically means a default style that you can just select and it applies to your block. There are also a bunch more features that aren't listed in this section here, but I'll show you some of them right now. If we go back to our page editor and we add in a table block, let's just search for table. If you've used a table block before, you'll recognize there's some changes been made here. If you've never used a table block before, you might want to use a table block. It's actually pretty handy because tables are quite hard to make. Column one, column two, data one, data two. So here's our basic table, nothing too fancy. But on the right-hand side, there's a lot more settings for our tables. We can have fixed width cells. We can add a header section. We can add a footer section, have our color settings here. We have styles that we can switch to if we want to. Like I said, if you use tables before, you'll recognize some of these as new. If you haven't, you won't. But they've definitely improved the settings for the table block. We have some enhancements to the gallery block, such as add a gallery. It's going to add these people to it. All those guys. Insert. We can now click into any one of these and move them, reposition them by clicking on these arrows. This, of course, a lot of this stuff is something page builders have been doing for a long, long time, but it's things that Gutenberg are slowly getting better at and enhancing to make our lives with Gutenberg easier, if using Gutenberg is the way you want to go. The recent post blocks also has an upgrade. We just add a recent posts. I don't think I have recent posts on this page. 
I don't. But if we had recent posts here, we would now be able to choose under post content, we can now choose to show an excerpt or the full post. And if we choose just the excerpt, we can choose how many words and we can adjust that here. This was not possible previously with the latest post widget. And the last thing I want to show you in the block editor is in the list block, we now have the ability to make our lists a little more flexible. Let's just uh, make a short list here. Should have called these items, not list, but that's okay. Now we have the option to change this to numbers, which we had before, but now we can also indent our list if we want to, or outdent, is that what it's called? I'm not sure, but we can indent. We indent the one below our list item, so we have nested lists just like this, and we can also change the start value, the start value being where the numbers start. So if we have our start value at two, we don't have a two as our beginning value. You can have your start value be minus two if you want. List number minus two has this these indented lists or that nested list. Well, let's take these back out. And now we have starting at minus two, minus one, zero, one, two. So we can change our starting value. We can also reverse the numbering if you want to do that for some reason. Have a countdown type list if you want using this toggle switch right here. If we head back to our list of new features, we now have a new default theme, 2020. And this will be added or installed on every WordPress install from now on. And in fact, because I just updated, I think I probably have 2020 on this site now. Uh, yes, there it is right here, 2020. If we activate this and view our site, not too much has changed since we used uh, Page Builder to make this, but 2020 is now out. And a lot of sites will be built with 2020 because I'm surprised how many people use the default WordPress themes to build their sites. So 2020 will become a major well-used theme, I have no doubt. We've also gained some improvements in the site check. You may never have used this feature. If you go to tools and you go to site health, we have recommendations on improving our site health. Mostly these are in regards to security. So right now I have four recommendations. One's performance, actually. Three of them are security. I should remove inactive plugins, remove inactive themes. My current version of PHP 7.2.9 is out of date, and I should use HTTPS. So those are the three concerns the site is showing. The tests I passed are listed here. Yours may show one of these options. Now, the goal is not always to get every single one of these perfect, depending on how you build your site and what your site's doing and what kind of plugins you have doing things for you. But it, it is a good idea. Like the, these options that they listed here, those are great things to take care of. Our database servers up to date, required and recommended modules are installed, our site communicates together with other services, scheduled events are running, HTTP requests are working as expected, your site is not set to output debug information, REST API is available, we can communicate with WordPress.org, background updates are working, your site can perform loopback requests and UTF-8 MB4, which is the character encoding. I skipped that one earlier for some reason. The character encoding is supported. So those are all things that are fine. I guess you can shoot for getting all these correct. Previously, there used to be a number percentage here that said your site is currently 80% healthy. And in some cases, trying to reach 100% was not actually good for the website, depending how it was built. So clearly they've taken out that percentage for that reason. There's a lot of bad feedback WordPress got in regards to that. And under the info tab, we now have information about our WordPress site. Click on any one of these. We can see a lot of information, more than you probably wanna know, but it's information that's great for debugging for somebody who's trying to fix an issue or identify some kind of issue. This is all important information. Let's go back to our update page, which is now gone. That's awesome. Luckily, I have it all up here. Another great feature, when you upload images, they can now automatically be rotated to be the correct way. Sometimes you take an image on a smartphone and it's not the right way. You have to rotate it manually using a photo editor or inside the WordPress media library, but now it's done automatically based on the rotation data inside the image file. One of those image enhancements that I said earlier about big images is you can resume an upload. If you're uploading a big image from your phone and for some reason the connection falters or breaks and the, the upload stops, that upload can be resumed, which is super handy. The last thing 
is if we go to, I don't even know where we are here, settings and general, we have our admin email address. This email address will be verified every once in a while. Why that is, I'm not sure. I guess to make sure it's up to date, but you may be getting every once in a while, every few months or so, emails to the admin email address asking you to verify this is still the admin email address for this website. So if you get that email, don't be concerned. That is how it's supposed to work from now on. You may also notice if you've used WordPress a lot, there's some contrast changes that we have here. This is a settings page of a WordPress that's not updated yet. And if we click over to the updated one, we can see the field sizes are larger. There's a more defined border around the fields. And it just looks, actually looks a lot cleaner having these rounded edges. Let's scroll down so we're not always jumping back and forth or jumping up and down, I should say. So that's really the biggest change it looks like. Just the, the fields are, instead of the default looking field, they're a little better styled which makes it look a bit better. There might be some UI changes throughout that you see as well, but that's the biggest one I see right now. And that's WordPress 5.3 updates in a nutshell. There's a whole lot more in the back, and there's a lot of updates for developers who are developing for Gutenberg. And if you want to see the full master list of all the updates in WordPress 5.3, head to this URL. I've linked to it in the description down below. This page gives a lot of information about the update to WordPress 5.3 Kirk and this page here as well. So these two pages together, I'll add both these links to the description down below. Have a read through if you wanna know more about the updates. And if you don't, it's a good thing you watch this video because what you heard here should be good enough. So those are the new features. I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, make sure to click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And then check out this video up here where I show you the top 10 most common security mistakes I see over and over again on WordPress. And then check out this one down here, which shows you why WordPress sites are hacked even when they have no traffic. This is a must watch video for everybody with a WordPress site. So check that one out. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.